Hi, it's the 1st of September here, which means first day of spring. It's the end of winter. Yes, because we're in the summer hemisphere. It's all backwards, you know. Yeah, the water goes down the drain the other direction. You know the deal. Anyway, end of winter. And I something really interesting happened with the flu this season. And I thought I'd look into it because... Uh, like, normally I get the flu every season, like, because I've got kids, right, they go to school, I go to the gym, I pick it up from, like, you know, like, guaranteed to get it. Didn't get anything this year. No flu, no cold, no nothing. In fact, I only know one single person who got the flu, and she's a uh, preschool uh, teacher, but that's it. Like, for like all of winter, in fact, you know, basically the whole year. And like when I go out and about, I don't go out and about too far, but you know, I go down to the local shopping center or I go to uh, like in my office building here or I go to the gym, or I go to the school or you know, wherever I am, it's so common to see people like in the middle of winter, they're blowing their nose, they're sneezing, they're coughing, they're sniffling, they're doing you know, all sorts of things. And seriously, I have not seen a single person, I can't recall a single person who I've seen anywhere in public, cough, sneeze, uh, you know, sniffle, do whatever, nothing. Um, it's almost as if the flu has like completely vanished this season. So I thought I'd take a look at the numbers and actually show you. So this is not really going to be about COVID as such. It's more going to be uh, to do with, you know, just the flu stats. And I like data. So I thought we'd look at the data and have a look at uh, flu cases in Australia compared to previous years and deaths from the flu and how that uh, compares to our COVID uh, deaths. Because now the reason I probably didn't get it this season is because it's just a lack of flu around and of course the general uh you know everyone's washing their hands everyone's super aware you know hyper aware of hygiene and everything else right so it could be that but it's likely like a combination of that and also back in January when I knew this whole COVID thing was going to explode I started to train myself not to like touch my face anywhere not to uh, you know rub my nose not to touch my face not to rub my eyes and do all that sort of stuff and it actually took quite a bit of effort probably like one or two months in the end to try and like untrain myself from that habit and that's helped a great deal but anyway let's go have a look at some stats first of all uh the uh, covid stuff here in australia this is our first wave okay this is the uh confirmed cases this is for all of australia and we we peaked around end of march here like end of March, like 1st of April, something like that. And we were getting like, you know, 350. I think we peaked upwards of 460 people or well, cases a day confirmed. And our uh, testing was like skyrocketing as well. If you actually, I won't go into the details, but if you compare this with testing, we were like ramping, testing was ramping up more and more and more. The uh, new cases per day, it just hit a peak and then it started dropping off. I can't remember when like lockdowns and other things happened. I'm not going to go into the details, but our testing went up so it's not like we stopped testing and that's why uh in fact you know testing just accelerated at uh that point it just went crazy so but yeah we hit that peak and we went down this is nationwide and then it just you know teetered here and i thought i was uh tweeting at, at the time that i thought i saw like nice little oscillations in here there seemed to be like, I, you know, you probably have to get better at data. Is this, no, this is not every day. You'd have to go to the daily data. But you can actually start to see like little, little, uh, you know, like sign X on X kind of, uh, you know, a tapering away of, uh, you know, little oscillations like that going on. Anyway, yes, we did get hit with the dreaded second wave, which actually countrywide turned out to be worse than the uh first wave so you know we peaked in uh like what yeah early august here or something like this but this second wave is entirely due to one state here in australia victoria bloody victorians um if you take out victoria from the equation it'd just be petering out like this the rest of the country uh, like half of our states we don't have many um and, and territories uh most of our states like they're like covid free for like months and months. And here in New South Wales, we had, you know, 
five, 10 cases, like a bad day, it'd be like 15 or something. But it was practically down into the, like the single digit range for New South Wales, which is the most populous uh, state here in Australia. Victoria, if you don't know, second most populous uh, state, that's where Melbourne is. Of course, Sydney's in New South Wales, Melbourne's in Victoria. And this entire second spike is just due to Victoria. And of course, Victoria has gone into massive lockdowns. So I won't go into the details, doesn't matter. But if you take out Victoria, yeah, we, we just had this first spike and boop, and nothing after that. So if you're curious just to have a look at Victoria, that's the first spike in Victoria, and there's the second spike, <laughs> just massive. Anyway, sadly, yes, we did have uh, quite a lot of deaths due to COVID. Uh, Countrywide, Australia-wide, we, we now total 657 deaths. But I want to compare this with flu of previous seasons and to see this year whether or not we're actually ahead um, where we're, we've been actually better off this year in terms of uh, number of dead uh, due to uh, respiratory in infection, you know, illness, or whatever the medical term is, which COVID is one of them. Just like the flu, it's a respiratory illness. And it sweeps through retirement villages and nursing homes uh, like every year. My, my mum's in a retirement village and they lose like a small retirement village. They, they lose like half a dozen every year just due to the regular uh, flu season. It just sweeps through and wipes out, you know, half a dozen people, um, unfortunately. Now here is where Victoria has, uh, if once again, if you take out Victoria, we only had, this is like the first wave, here it is, right? And so the deaths started to ramp up and we had like 103, we were just over 100 and then Victoria, all of these deaths, it went from basically 100 right up. So let's say there's an extra 500 deaths, just, I believe that's pretty much just due to Victoria because all the other states, including New South Wales here, we've had bugger all, really, uh, like bugger all cases and hence bugger, bugger all deaths because it's a, you know, it's a percentage percentage term and, I, and if you look at my Twitter feed I've done our stats on that but anyway so if you even if we include Victoria okay so 657 uh, total deaths in Australia which is absolutely tragic but let's go compare it with the flu in the previous years here now I'm getting these stats uh, from the official uh, Australian Bureau of uh, Statistics and Australia and the Health uh, and the Department of Health as well which actually has an Oz flu thing where they track it every year and we've actually only got like one month to go in our flu season our flu season's not yearly doesn't go from 1st of January to 31st of December it actually goes from uh, uh through to October so they're they're tracking in previous years and the worst year that we actually had was uh 2017 and we actually had 1255 deaths due to influenza so there you go so even it's so 2017 for us here in Australia was twice as bad as all of our COVID deaths um so far this year so yeah, that, that just puts it into perspective. Uh, and if you take out Victoria, if the Victorian thing never, second peak wave never happened, then we'd be down in like 100. We'd be like an order of magnitude less deaths due to influenza. Why? Why is there no influenza this year? Well, let's have a look at some of the data here. So here's the influenza uh, surveillance reports as uh, this one is from 27th of July to 9th of August 2020. So this is their latest one. This is where there's some really interesting graphs. So this is the percent of calls to health director related to ILI. ILI stands for influenza uh, like illness. So it could be anything. It could be COVID. It could be, you know, cold flu or whatever. Uh, it is right. And this is from, this is uh, 2020. So this is from January through to December. And of course there was this massive peak here in uh, like mid March or whatever, which corresponds mid to late March, which corresponds of course to the COVID, you know, uh, crisis, right? Everyone was panicking. We're getting hundreds of new cases per day and uh, you know Australia wide so everyone was calling up and saying I've got this I've got that right so yeah obviously there's a huge spike but interestingly look it drops off after that it drops off to practically like you know, look this yellow line is the five-year average we're talking like five and nine percent 
or something like that for this range. Like when we start getting, you know, June is when we start getting into winter. So the winter period here, of course, uh, this data hasn't actually uh, caught up uh, yet. Yeah, look, it's like, that's the five year average even. And these are the other years. Like these are the last uh, five years. And it's just dropped off to like two and a half percent down to like one under like 2% or something. Just like two and a half, three percent something like that. Crazy. So it's like ha more than halved uh, the number of people who are calling in for symptoms and things like that. So that's really interesting. So it's like because of the hygiene and the awareness and, you know, the social distancing and everything else, right? Um, it's, it's just it's almost as if it's vanished. And this includes calls for COVID as well. This includes calls for, oh, I've got a cough and it might be COVID, right? This is all covered under the um, under that data. So that's fascinating. But this is even more interesting. This is the proportion of fever and cough among flu tracking participants Australia between February and October 2015 to 2020. I don't know why this data doesn't extend back here. I'm not sure what the deal is. But anyway, we've got the spike in March, of course. OK, uh, fever and cough. But then look, this is the last five years. The yellow line is the five year average of the last five years. Look where we are. Like it was like, you know, 2%. Now we're down at like almost 0.2%. It's almost an order of magnitude drop. Not quite order of magnitude, well, at one point maybe, but like unbelievable. So this is the, you know, people reporting fever and cough. Wow. It's like, no wonder I haven't seen, and this correlates with, you know, my anecdotal thing of, oh, I don't know anyone. I've never seen anyone out there who's sneezing, coughing, looks like they got the flu or the cold or whatever. Whereas it was so common, like last season, any time before COVID, to, you know, people would still go to work. They'd still go to school. They'd still, still go to the gym. They'd still go to the shops and they're coughing and spluttering and blowing their nose and doing, you know, all sorts of stuff. And you, you can see that they've got the flu. And it, I haven't seen a single person ever, like in, in public or in private, actually, for that matter. No one in our family's uh, gotten the flu or the cold or, or our extended family um, who we still meet with has got the cold or the flu or anything. It's really remarkable. And this backs that up. Wow. And this is from uh, GP as a general practice. That's like our local doctor, their surveillance, sentinel surveillance system. I don't know. That's their, I don't know, you know, general tracking thing at, at your local doctor. So if your flu is bad enough, you'll go to the local doctor or whatever. And um, look, even this is low. Like, and yeah, sure, um, winter ends here, but I don't expect this to suddenly peak right up there. It's just nobody's got the flu. It's, it's just like, wow, look, it's the lowest we've ever had. Way lower, because you can see it. Like, here it is. In winter, right, these things peak up um, because it's flu season, right? Flu season, it doesn't quite start at the, uh, you know, the start of winter here, like 1st of June. But, you know, it takes a while for it to get colder and colder and it ramps up and the flu, um, you know, and it peters out by, like, end of September, kind of thing. So, yeah, I know we have another month left, but, geez, I, I expect this to stay completely flat. Unbelievable. It's almost like the flu's vanished. And it's not due to lack of testing either. This is a pr proportional sentinel laboratory test. I don't know. So they're testing for influenza and other uh, things. And it's like, boom. <laughs> like when, this is the blue one is the testing, the total number of tests, right? And these are the positive, you know, uh, things, right? This is kind of like, you know, pre-COVID. COVID was still like, meh, you know, it didn't really peak until March. And then it just once like... Everyone was hyper aware of everything and took precautions. Wow, it just dropped off to it became a nothing burger. And the number of influenza hospitalizations at uh, at hospitals, like, what? <laughs> where is it? Nobody's got the flu. It's almost as if good hygiene and awareness of, you know, and staying home when you're sick works. <laughs> Shock horror. And again, laboratory confirmed influenza. It's, <laughs> it's true. It's gone through the floor. Here's 2019 and here is the 2017, which is our worst flu season ever with like 1,200 uh, deaths. So how does this translate into the number of deaths due to uh, influenza? Well, in 2019, we had 705. So in 2017, there were 1,255 or whatever it was deaths. And uh, 2019, 705 influenza associated deaths. So last year we had 705 deaths. And if you count uh, our COVID deaths this year, 
Here it is, 657, including that massive second wave in Victoria. As I said, if the Victorian thing didn't, second wave didn't happen, uh, then we would have been down in 100. And if we go to the latest 2020 report, how many deaths do we have? 21,000 notifications, 36 people, or 0.17% of laboratory confirmed influenza associated deaths have been reported. So 36. So even if you include that 36 from influenza and 657, we are still behind our 2019, where was our 2019 at last year at 705. Wow, that is that is really fascinating. So if in, as I said, if Victoria uh, huge wave didn't happen, wow. As I said, like we're already ahead, including COVID, already ahead of influenza deaths from last season. It's really remarkable when you actually look at the data here. But of course, saying COVID's been a good thing, uh, that doesn't take into account the entire fallout of like everything COVID in terms of like the number of massive number of people unemployed absolute record number of businesses destroyed economies uh destroyed and and just our freedoms lots of freedoms taken away and all sorts of uh stuff and well we won't get into the whole politics of that so all the awareness of hygiene and everything has helped save actually quite a, a huge number of lives and hopefully we can keep it out so some goods come from it at least staying home when you're sick Whereas, you know, previous years, everyone was like going to work, soldiering on, keeping on going, keeping sending their kids to school. Even they got a runny nose and a cough and a fever. It's just people aren't doing that anymore. So we got no influenza. And if COVID didn't happen um, and we implemented just these basic stuff, I once again, how much is due to social distancing? How much is due to... Uh, well, lockdowns, we didn't have like huge amount of lockdowns here. And by the way, for those who ask, uh, masks, and for those who want to know, masks here aren't really a thing. I won't talk about Victoria, just ignoring Victoria. Um, even back here, when we were getting like 400 cases a day and New South Wales was the big epicenter of the COVID outbreak, at the local shopping center, I'd be lucky to see Oh, 5% of people wearing masks? It it just wasn't a thing. I actually see more now wearing masks, even like here in New South Wales at my local shopping centre as my reference point. Um, I see it, but still only 10% of people. It, it Masks just, you know, aren't a thing here, even during this uh, second wave. Once again, won't talk about Victoria, won't talk about public transport, which I don't take and all that uh, sort of stuff. Just, you know, general local shopping centre or at the gym, uh, you know, at uh, the school and things like that. Like, yeah, um, then basically, you know, nobody's wearing masks. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found that interesting because I did. I love looking at the data like this and going to like, you know, the proper source and like they've got some remarkable flu tracking data and these reports, which they actually release weekly, even during, um, you know, before COVID, right? And all this data here and how the flu has basically vanished. Uh, please, if you've got, uh, if you know of the actual data, uh, you know, for your country, your city or whatever, please let us know. Have you seen a similar drop off in uh, you know, flu like this. Have you seen people coughing and spluttering, you know, and sneezing and sniffling in the streets and things like that? If, if it's, uh, let us know in the comments if it's like me, where I have basically have not seen anyone do that for six months. It's just absolutely, whereas it was common as mud. And now it's like, hopefully, after all this uh, COVID thing is over, I really hope people uh, just remember to take basic hygiene and just stay home when you're sick. Here in Australia, we get a full-time employee. You get 20 sick days a year, right? Chuck a sickie. Yeah, no worries. You know, Australian tradition to chuck a sickie. But anyway, we get 20 sick days a, a year. But you know, I'm guilty of this myself. I'd still go to like work because, you know, I'm busy, want to get stuff done. And, you know, I've got the flu and I'll keep away from people and I won't touch, you know, I'll be trying, you know, be as hygienic as possible. Even before, like, uh, you know, the whole COVID thing, this, you know, we carry around like a, a disinfectant. Uh, bottle and you know always you know spraying wiping hands and you know before we eat and after we uh, touch things and things like that so hopefully people keep all this uh, hygiene and awareness up um, after the whole COVID thing has gone down like um, imagine if COVID's gone like a bad flu season here will be a thousand deaths if we can drop that to like what are we now we're well, 36 deaths this year 
like save huge numbers of lives and save untold amounts of uh, just basically downtime from people getting sick. Um, and uh, it's just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Just absolutely stunning drop. Anyway, I've waffled on enough. Please leave it in the comments uh, down below. Anyway, hope you found that as interesting as I did. Catch you next time.